All right, so for this demo, we're going to talk about adding a background to the, um, you know, background images. I'm sorry, to the processing programs as well as maybe try to load up, um, you know, a character or two on the page. We're going to start off with the basic setup here. So we've got your draw, and then we have our setup. Um, so over here, so a P image, right, a processing image is going to be what we're using to display a background. Essentially, we're just kind of loading an image and displaying it on the screen under the draw method. So here, pretty standard, we're just setting up the size. size, And then this is the part where you're actually gonna load an image. Be careful about the I here. Make sure that you're actually writing the capital I. Within quotes, what you're gonna do is just put in the file name. Now, this works because of the fact that here is actually where my program lies, right? This is where it's saved. So what I have is a bg.jpg file right in that parent folder. Um, if you guys are not familiar with this, this is the famous firewall at Yosemite. Um, make sure to check it out on my Instagram and give it a like. I'm just kidding. Um, but no, actually. Um, you guys should go and visit during this time of the year. Uh, but with that said, let's see if we can load it. So this again takes care of all the loading. Just make sure it's in the same folder as your .pde file. And from there, what we're going to do is we're just going to literally draw it on the screen. There's a function called image. And I'm going to call the name of the pimage object, which is bg in our case. And then I'm going to place it on the screen. So we're going to start off at 0, 0 and see what happens. All right, so here's what we see. Um, so as you can see, um, because the file is quite big, if I look at this, right, and my frame is only 500 by 700 pixels, but this is 1360, 1367 by 2048. Um, and so because of that, it's going to look like it's zoom in, but in actuality, it is because of the fact that if you only look at 500 by 700, then it's only going to be this corner of the screen. And so what we can do is we could actually force the image to resize to fit the window. And so there's a second version of image where you can figure out the, the width and height that you're trying to use. So in this case, I want to use 500 by 700, and so I can specify that, and that would force it to kind of take over the entire screen. Now for your game, of course, you're going to need a scrolling background, so this is actually not what you want to do. Um, and so for your game, you want to make sure that um, you're kind of just zoomed in. You have a big image so that you can do something like this. So. Let's say that I wanted it to scroll in the y direction over time. And to y is equal to zero. I can just use something like this and then increment y later. Um, and so now what we're gonna see is we're, we have a scrolling background. So now it's scrolling down. So if you could imagine um, maybe starting at the bottom of the picture and then moving that picture down as time goes on and that way you know, it would seem like you're moving in space within within your game. So there's that. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing except we're gonna do it for a game character on the screen. We're gonna do it using object-oriented programming though, in which case, you know, if there's a ship on the screen, then I'm going to define a file which tells me what it means to be a ship. So I'm gonna go over here and create a new tab and I'm gonna give it, um, since this is a space game for me, I'm gonna call it a ship. If you're doing another theme, of course, you know, give it descriptive names for your files. This represents an object, and so it makes sense that I call it a ship. So I'll call it ship. First thing is I'm gonna tell Java that I'm setting up a class. A class in Java represents an object. It's a template for objects. And then at the very top, right, so this is end of class, curly. So now define properties of a ship. 
So I'm going to say a ship has an x and y position. A ship has a width and height for size. A ship has an image attached to it. Image for ship. So those are the most crucial things, right? Later on, you might need other variables like, hey, is the ship firing? Does the ship have bullets, etc. Um, so this is object-oriented programming. When you're dealing with this, you have to define what it means to create these objects. And so that is with the constructor. Constructor. Um, job of the constructor is to set up the variables properties so these are the variables so it needs to set it up first things first I have to okay why don't I attach an image to this um, if I look at my folder though I'm gonna see what I have so I've got these ship images I'm gonna use ship 0 as one of my as my first image file and so the first thing I want to do is set up image for ship I'm going to do the same thing as my other file here, right? This is how you load an image. So I'm going to say that img is equal to load image followed by the name of the ship in double quotes. So that's good. Uh, my width, I know that this is a very small picture. It's about 29 by 27, I believe. So set up the size variables, good, and then I'm going to set up the X and Y. So within the context of the screen, I want it roughly halfway, so that's screen width. I can use these variables, so these are visible across different files, so I'm going to use those to center my ship. I'm going to say, okay x is equal to screen width divided by 2 uh, minus the width of the ship itself divided by 2 so that would shift it to the left you guys saw that in Pong so I'm not going to sit here and say that you haven't seen it okay so then I'm going to define a draw method for the ship like what is the draw method doing for the ship well it's doing the same thing as Oops. as this essentially where it's drawing the image so all we have to do under draw first thing we want to do of course is to display the image itself and so here it's called IMG then I need to give it the X and Y position okay um, so this is again I mentioned that this is a template for an object so the object doesn't just magically exist we have to create it and that's where we're going to create it here so we're going to say ship is now my type so because we created a new type we can use one so that's again similar to saying hey this is going to be an int i'm saying that this is going to be a ship player and then over here i'm going to create the object under setup sorry so call constructor for ship object so I'm gonna say player is equal to new ship so calls constructor so this line of code right here that part in particular actually calls upon this right here just this part that we define to be the constructor and that helps kind of set up the variables because these variables is what it means to be a ship Right, a ship has an XY with height and an image attached to it. So you can kind of think of a class, essentially, it's just another cluster of code. All right, so now that the player has been set up, I need to say or call upon. I'm going to delete the desk because we don't need it. So I'm going to tell the player to use its draw method so it can draw itself on the screen. So in theory, as long as I didn't get any naming things, um, incorrect it would be there so here it is right um, that's my ship but of course since we're playing sky force maybe I want to put it towards the bottom 
or you guys can def to kind of decide where to put it. Um, so I'm going to say screen height minus 100, I don't know. And that should put it towards the bottom over here. So now there it is. So that's how you deal with images on... Oh, I guess you can't really see it because my screen is too small. So I'm going to move it up a little bit. I'll move it back to normal so you can see it. Okay, so there it is. Here it is, just in case you don't see it. Now the second thing you want to be able to do is um, have it follow the mouse, right? And so what if this was actually following my mouse? In other words, it is the mouse because that's pretty much the mechanics of Skyforce. Um, and so what we need to do is listen for the event of mouse moving. And so down here, right, under draw for our main file, right? So void mouse moved. I'm going to say, so this, if you want to make the cursor disappear because you're going to display the ship on top of your cursor, you can call the function called no cursor. So get rid of cursor, get rid of pointer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the ship to change its X and Y position. So my player, in order to get access to its X and Y, I'm going to call it by its name. And then I'm going to use the dot operator. And then I'm going to say mouse X. Player dot Y is equal to mouse Y. So now this is not going to be perfect because of the fact that I want you to work with the shifting yourself. Um, I don't want you to just straight up copying my code because that is not what programming is, right? So at this point, it looks like it's following my mouse, right? So as I'm moving my mouse around the screen, my ship is following. And again, that is due to the fact that here it says whenever the mouse moves, get rid of the cursor, and then I want you to update the player's X position and the Y position to be where the mouse is in terms of its X and Y. And so there you have it. So we attached it to the mouse um, and all that jazz. And then somehow this got rid of that. So we'll rerun it again. Um, so there you go. Again, no cursor. Sometimes it does glitch out. Um, and so essentially that's basic parts of that. Um, if you want, if I want the ship to control itself, so for example, what if I say, okay, what if the, the ship was always moving up? In your case, you have enemies that are always moving down. But if I want my ship to always move up, then I say update um, ship y. So y minus minus. Essentially what this is doing is every time it draws the image, it also updates that object so that it's at a different location. And so when I see it now, when I'm not taking charge, my ship is just moving up. If I move it using the mouse and then let go, again, behind the scenes, roughly six times, 60 times per second, it's calling draw for the ship. And that draw method is saying, hey, update the ship so that it's going up. How could you use this same setup for your case? Well, easy. Instead of the ship, right? Instead of it being called ship, you would call it enemy one, enemy two. It could be submarine, it could be shark, it could be alien one, alien two, etc. So instead of ship here, it would be the name of your file. Instead of y minus minus, maybe the enemies are going from the top to bottom and so you would say y plus plus right so i'm going to show you how i can take this file and turn it into a brand new class that defines a brand new object so i'm going to say i have i'm going to have multiple enemies this one is just going to be called enemy one and so now i can easily change this to say that it's called enemy one and then maybe this one would change to enemy 
1.1.png and I'm gonna say my enemy is always moving down y plus plus enemy moves down as time progresses so that's a, a very quick example of that um, here I'm gonna say you know what I'm gonna use my other file for now just so you can see exactly how easy it was to do this so I want to refer to an actual file uh, so I'm gonna go over here I'm gonna add a new enemy enemy one is enemy n right enemy one uh, and so over here under setup I'm gonna create the enemy enemy one is equal to new enemy one so this variable here that name it's just a variable name so you can name that whatever this however has to match the name of your class file so now I can say okay I'm gonna ask the enemy to draw itself on the screen and then when I click play we should see that you now have like two things overlapping so one of them is going down right so if that if I wanted that of course to go and start at the very top I can say this starts at zero so now as you can see I've got my ship that I'm moving with my mouse the other ship quote unquote my enemy is moving down you would have specific files that would be of course representing an enemy in your main player um, and of course yours your main player probably isn't just moving up randomly and essentially that's the basic parts of um, or some parts of Skyforce whatever you want to call yours.